We never thought we would be saying goodbye to the legendary A320, the best-selling airliner in history. But the great news is we are getting something better. Its replacement is being called the fourth revolution in flight. We are talking about engines that look nothing like today's. Wings inspired by birds, and fuel savings so massive they could change the economics of flying forever. But before we tell you about Airbus's plan to end the A320 era, let's see why Airbus must replace the A320. Why must Airbus replace the A320? Because if you ask anyone in aviation what the most successful jet in history is, chances are they will point straight to the Airbus A320. This plane is a backbone of modern commercial aviation. Since its first flight in 1987, the A320 family has carried billions of passengers, transformed low-cost airlines, and given Boeing 737 more than a few sleepless nights. Today, more than 14,000 A320 family aircraft have been delivered to airlines worldwide, with thousands more on order. That makes it not just a bestseller, but a record-setter in commercial aviation. Airlines love the A320 because it is a workhorse. It flies short and medium routes efficiently. Seating is anywhere from 140 to 240 passengers depending on the version. For carriers like EasyJet, Indigo, Lufthansa, and American Airlines, the A320 is the daily breadwinner. It's reliable, cheaper to operate than wide bodies, and perfectly suited for the busiest flight paths in the world, like New York to Chicago, London to Paris, or Delhi to Mumbai. Even the passengers know it well. Even if you are not an aviation geek, you have probably been on an A320 without even realizing it. Its cabin is familiar. There is a single aisle, six seats across, two engines tucked neatly under the wings. It's the kind of plane you board without thinking twice because it feels normal, safe, and consistent. That's part of its genius. The A320 became so common that it blended into the background of everyday life. So if it works so well, why on earth replace it? That's the big question. But the reality is that the world has changed, and the A320, for all its brilliance, cannot keep up forever. Think about this. The A320's core design dates back to the 1980s. Yes, Airbus has kept updating it. The A320neo that entered service in 2016 brought more efficient engines, wingtip sharklets, and a range boost. But these were incremental upgrades, not reinventions. The shape of the plane, the way it flies, and the materials it's made from are all rooted in ideas that are now four decades old. Airbus cannot keep stretching the design forever. At some point, the old platform becomes a ceiling. You cannot squeeze much more fuel efficiency, performance, or sustainability out of it. And then there is the real-world pressure. First of all, aviation accounts for about 2-3% of global CO2 emissions. That doesn't sound huge, but with climate policies tightening, regulators are cracking down. The EU's Fit for 55 package and the Global Corsia Agreement both push airlines to slash emissions. That was a huge motivator for Airbus to come up with a plan for a replacement. Then there is the inevitable passenger growth. The number of people flying is expected to double by 2040. It will reach nearly 8 billion annual passengers. More people in the skies means more emissions unless planes become dramatically cleaner. Airbus also has to consider fuel economics. Because fuel makes up 25-30% to 30 of an airline's operating costs, a 10% cut in fuel burn can mean billions in savings across a global fleet. Now imagine 30% fuel savings. That's an airline CFO's dream. The bottom line is that the trusty A320 is reaching the limits of what tweaks and retrofits can achieve. The aviation industry now needs leaps, not steps. There is also competitive pressure. Boeing, despite its troubles with the 737 MAX, is eyeing a next-generation narrowbody for the 2030s. In China, COMAX C919 has entered service and aims to chip away at Airbus and Boeing's market duopoly. Even Russia has attempted its own challengers, like the Irkut MC21, though geopolitics has limited its reach. If Airbus wants to keep its edge, it cannot just rest on the A320's legacy. Airlines are already asking tough questions about sustainability, cost, and long-term strategy. Whoever offers the first true game-changing narrowbody in the 2030s could lock in dominance for decades, just as the A320 itself did back in the 80s. And it's not just about airlines. Passengers today are far more climate conscious. Flight shame movements in Europe, criticism of frequent flyers, and younger generations demanding greener travel all put pressure on airlines. Imagine trying to convince eco-minded travelers in 2035 to board a 50-year-old design that runs on kerosene. It's definitely not a good look. On top of that, comfort expectations are changing. People want quieter cabins, smoother flights, and less of that bone-dry air that makes you feel like you have aged 10 years on a red-eye. The A320 is solid, but it was not built with those modern concerns in mind. See, there is a pattern in aviation history. Planes that dominate eventually get replaced by something radically new. In the 1950s, the jet engine killed off piston-powered airliners like the DC-6. In the 1970s, the Boeing 747 redefined long-haul travel. And in the 1980s, the A320 brought fly-by-wire controls and digital cockpits into the mainstream. 
Each time, it was not just a new plane, we saw a revolution in how we fly. The A320 has already had its long reign, but Airbus knows the clock is ticking. By the late 2030s, it will be nearly 50 years old as a design. It will be like driving a car model that hasn't fundamentally changed since 1987. It would simply feel ancient. So Airbus is not replacing the A320 because it failed. It is doing it because it succeeded too well. The world now expects more, more efficiency, more sustainability, more comfort. And Airbus, being the company that first beat Boeing at its own game with the A320, wants to lead the next revolution. So what is Airbus replacing it with? The radical new tech. So, what is Airbus replacing it with? If the A320 was the dependable family car of the skies, Airbus is now building something closer to a spaceship in disguise. This is not just another Neo or Plus upgrade with shinier engines. Airbus is sketching out an aircraft so different that insiders call it the fourth revolution in flight. The first revolution was the jump to jets in the 1950s. The second was wide bodies like the 747. The third was digital systems like fly-by-wire. And now, if Airbus is right, this next generation narrow body could be the fourth. Let's break it down. The first thing people will notice is the engine. Forget the smooth round nacelles we see under every jetliner wing. Airbus, working with Safran and GE Aerospace, is testing an open fan engine. It looks almost retro, like someone glued giant propeller blades to a modern turbofan. But don't let appearances fool you. This is futuristic science at work. The trick here is the bypass ratio. That's the measure of how much air flows around the engine core compared to how much goes through it. Current advanced engines like the Pratt & Whitney geared turbofan have a bypass ratio around 12 to 1. The open fan pushes this to a staggering 60 ratio 1. In plain words, it moves way more air for way less fuel. The payoff is up to 30% lower fuel consumption, dramatically less CO2, and surprisingly, less noise than today's engines. That alone is huge for a new plan. This means airlines will now save nearly a third on fuel, which is normally their biggest cost after staff salaries. Suddenly, routes that were barely profitable become moneymakers. Low-cost carriers could cut fares or boost margins. Legacy carriers could survive volatile oil prices with less panic. But of course, there is a catch. These giant exposed blades don't fit neatly into the traditional engine design box. Integrating them into an aircraft is a puzzle. Where do you mount them? How do you make them safe from debris? Airbus believes it has answers, and those answers lead us to the wings, or the Wings of Tomorrow program to be exact. Airbus engineers are obsessed with the Albatross, which is a seabird famous for gliding hundreds of kilometers with barely a flap. The secret is its long, thin wings with incredible glide ratios. Airbus is copying that playbook. The new wings will be longer and narrower, made from advanced composite materials that are both stronger and lighter than aluminum. The design reduces drag and increases lift, which means less engine power is needed to cruise. Combine that with open fan engines, and you have a plane that sips fuel instead of guzzling it. But longer wings come with a problem. Yes, it's airports. Most gates are designed for planes with a certain wingspan. If the wings are too long, the shiny new jet won't fit in the terminal. Airbus's solution is folding wingtips. After landing, the outer sections of the wings will bend upward, just like military aircraft carriers use for storage. That way, the plane can dock at standard gates without hogging space. It's a clever plan. They are designing an albatross in the air and a compact bird on the ground. Next, we have the fuselage or the tube where passengers sit. It will also look familiar at first glance. But under the skin, it's a different beast. Traditional aircraft are built with aluminum alloys. They are sturdy, but heavy and energy intensive to make. The next Airbus narrowbody will use advanced composites and thermoplastics. Composites like carbon fiber make the structure lighter without sacrificing strength. Thermoplastics, on the other hand, can be melted and reshaped, making them both versatile for manufacturing and recyclable at the end of the plane's life. Airbus has suggested that up to 40% of the aircraft could be made from recycled or renewable materials. That's not a small tweak. Even the way the plane is built will change. Forget huge assembly lines with endless manual labor. Airbus plans to bring in robotics and AI-guided systems for precision and speed. It's because by the 2030s, Airbus will need to deliver around 40 of these planes per month just to meet demand. That level of output requires a factory revolution as much as an aircraft revolution. Now let's talk about something that sounds small but has big consequences. Taxiing. Today, aircraft burn fuel while idling and crawling to the runway under their own power. It's wasteful and clogs up airports. Airbus's new plane will feature the Optimate system, which is a semi-autonomous taxiing technology. This means dozens of planes will roll around the tarmac like chess pieces, perfectly choreographed, without endless radio chatter or human error. This would save airlines millions in fuel, reduce congestion, and even make your boarding to takeoff time shorter. If you have ever sat on the runway for half an hour waiting for clearance, you will appreciate this change. Now the headline move is that Airbus will make this jet the first narrowbody designed from scratch to run on 100% sustainable 
renewable aviation fuel. Today's aircraft can only run on a 50-50 blend of SAF and conventional kerosene. SAF itself, made from things like waste oils or synthetic processes, can reduce life cycle carbon emissions by up to 80%. The problem is that right now it makes up less than 1% of global jet fuel use. Airbus wants to change that. By creating a plane fully optimized for SAF, they want to spark demand and push the whole industry toward greener fuels. If successful, it could shift the entire global aviation ecosystem. Let's not forget the people sitting inside. Airbus is promising more than efficiency. It's also promising comfort. The new jet will be quieter, thanks to the open fan design and aerodynamic improvements. Inside, passengers will feel the difference with lower cabin altitude pressure and higher humidity. That means fewer headaches, less dehydration, and generally feeling less like a zombie after flying. And those albatross wings will smooth out turbulence. A longer, flexible wing absorbs bumps better than a stiff, short one. In plain English, fewer spilled coffees and less clutching your armrest during a rough patch. This isn't luxury for luxury's sake. Airbus knows that if passengers associate flying with comfort and sustainability, they will choose airlines that operate these new jets and airlines know happier passengers are repeat customers. The great thing is that Airbus is not just thinking about one aircraft. The technologies being tested could spread to other projects. Let's say regional jets, wide bodies, even air taxis. It's a toolbox for the future of aviation. The ripple effect could be massive. If open fan engines prove themselves on narrow bodies, they could scale up to long-haul aircraft. If SAF becomes mainstream here, it could eventually fuel transoceanic flights. In simple words, Airbus is building the foundation for a new era of flight. And of course, none of this comes without risk. New engine designs can hit snags. Look at the headaches Pratt & Whitney's geared turbofan caused early on. Folding wings need to be ultra-reliable because just imagine the chaos if they failed mid-flight. And scaling up SAF requires a supply chain that doesn't yet exist at the levels needed. But Airbus has little choice. The A320's replacement has to be bold. If it's too cautious, it will fall behind Boeing, Comac, or whoever else enters the 2030s with a clean sheet design. For now, Airbus has said this new jet will enter service in the late 2030s. That sounds distant, but in aviation terms, it's around the corner. Designing, testing, certifying, and building a new aircraft family can take 15 to 20 years, so the work has already started. For now, Airbus is running test beds. They are flying demonstrators with open fan engines, experimenting with new wing designs and refining production techniques. By the mid-2030s, we will probably see prototypes. By the late 2030s, passengers could be boarding the real thing. The Airbus A320 changed aviation once by proving that a European jet could beat Boeing at its own game. Now its successor is being built to change aviation again, not just for airlines, but for the planet. This new plan feels like a gamble, but if Airbus pulls it off, when you step onto this aircraft in the late 2030s, you will be stepping into the future of flying. The competition. Now Airbus is not the only one chasing greener skies, but it is trying to stay two steps ahead. Boeing has experimented with biofuels and hydrogen research, but its current fleet, like the 737 MAX, still relies heavily on conventional kerosene. Airbus's push for 100% SAF gives it a potential first-mover advantage, a way to market itself as the eco-leader in commercial aviation. Airlines that want to prove their green credentials will likely flock to the manufacturer offering a jet that ticks all the boxes. And Airbus is not stopping with SAF. Behind the scenes, it is also exploring hydrogen-powered aircraft under its Zero program. It is targeting the mid-2030s for a launch. That means the A320 successor is part of a wider portfolio aimed at cutting aviation's climate impact from multiple angles. SAF may dominate short and medium-haul flights, while hydrogen could one day power regional routes. Together, they could rewrite the rulebook of aviation fuel. Compared to today's A320, the difference is dramatic. The current jet can trim emissions through efficiency tweaks, but it is fundamentally tied to fossil fuels. The replacement, however, is built with sustainability in its DNA, with lightweight composites, recyclable materials, autonomous ground systems, and green fuels. It is not just about flying smarter. Airbus is about to prove that commercial aviation can reinvent itself for a climate-conscious world. What do you think? Will it be successful in doing so? Tell us your thoughts in the comments below. And before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you never miss the latest aviation updates. We will keep you in the loop. Goodbye for now.